Welcome to our devos where we have been talking about fighting fair. Most of our problems relationally come down to the fact that we don't know how to have healthy conflict. And the Bible is filled with wonderful insight on how to maximize the love inside of a conflict that seems like it's so damaging. Believe it or not, the Bible gives us great guideposts as to how to navigate the difficult highway of conflict. And one of them, and this is one that I'll be honest, I hesitated to mention because we tend to go really quickly to this one and it's not always, it, it shouldn't be your first order of business when it comes to conflict. Now, I'm going to put two caveats out there. You should only attempt this, number one, if this is a relationship that you are trying to save. Like if you're trying to resolve something with someone, if it's somebody you have to deal with, like a coworker or you know a spouse, if there's something where you can't meet in the middle and habitual sin is going on and you can't seem to you know re- reconcile the relationship. Or you have, so it has to be a relationship you want to save and it has to happen in the context of after having already tried to talk to that person about the conflict privately, okay? So if those two, because as an aside, not all conflict you can restore the relationship. In fact, not all conflict you should. If you've been abused, you know, there are people that I've talked to that they've been, you know, sexually abused. Um, You do not have to restore the relationship with a person. You're called by God to forgive them. But forgiveness does not entail a restoration of conflict. You might have to forgive them. You have to go through the proper channels of, you know, healing in that. But you don't have to restore the relationship, okay? But this is if you want to restore the relationship, but the restoration process is needed. And also if you've already tried to consult them privately, you might just call for backup. If you can't do it on your own, you might have to call for backup. Jesus talks about this, and he's talking about within the context of church, you know, or I should say at the time he's speaking a synagogue type of thing, but he's talking about it in the context of a community of believers. And he says here in Matthew chapter 18, verse 16, he says, if he does not listen, meaning you've already confronted him privately, that's already assumed. He says, take one or two others along with you that every charge may be established by the evidence of two or three witnesses. So he says, if somebody's sinning against you, if somebody has sinned against you and they will not hear it. So meaning you say to someone, hey, look, I noticed that you dominated in that meeting and you said blah, 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 and blah, 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 blah. Remember specific, you would be real specific to the situation. You said this about me. This is what specifically happened. This is how I felt about it. How can you interpret that? Like, you're crazy, you're out of your mind. I don't want to hear this. This is nonsense, which people do that. Some really strong people do that. You might have to get somebody else involved to go, hey, I, we didn't really meet in the middle, so I brought John here, and we're going to talk about this, and I, I want to just try to get a resolution to this, because they were there too, and it, notice it says witnesses, evidence of two or three witnesses. Now, this is an Old Testament thing about verifying evidence that is against somebody with two or three people, but it actually is really super useful in the context of arguments too, because if you're really trying to get a restoration in a relationship, if somebody has a habitual pattern and you're trying to help to bring this to light, if they're not willing to hear it from you and it's damaging, you might need to bring somebody else in that also loves them and that loves you and that mediates. This is where I would say a good time to call in a counselor, uh, a pastoral counselor, a biblical counselor, or, you know, Christian counselor, psychologist. Uh, and, you know, sometimes couples, they cannot meet in the middle. Sometimes they just, they're at an impasse. You know, I've, we've, my, my wife and I have had those in our marriages where we've sought counsel from other wise people, we've, you know, pastors, counselors, there is nothing wrong with that. And that's okay. But when you get to that point, you have to be willing to first say, okay, we tried to do this. We cannot meet in the middle. We can't get there. God will sometimes use other people to help restore that relationship. So if you want to restore, if you want to have that conflict, sometimes you just have to call in some backup.